Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Totally turned off location now, so, right? We'll see. <laughs> Hopefully we're better. Um, I didn't have a chance to clean up my list before I came back on. So sometimes when you have a bunch of trolls like that, they end up following you and then they can see when they're broadcasting and then they come back in. But holy cow, <laughs> so annoying. I don't know how people broadcast with, with location on all the time. It would drive me nuts. I get so distracted. So yeah. Fun tagline. You like that, do you? Yeah. It's, uh, it, and I have a very definite reason for saying that. So one more time, one more time, uh, sends out receptors for it to produce the hormone insulin. So absolutely. I don't know. I'd have to see the Dr. Oz article. So that's the last thing. Um, <laughs> that's the last thing I'm saying about that. Honey absolutely does. Any type of sugar is going to spike your insulin. Any type of sugar is going to spike your blood sugar. However, however, when you have artificial sweeteners or major sweeteners like, but you have the caloric intake with honey, see, that's different. You do not have that caloric intake with stevia. So your body, as soon as something sweet, anything sweet hits your tongue, it starts producing insulin. And so, and you can, you can wear out your receptors doing that. You can wear out the things that make it doing that. So, all right. So that's that's why I don't like stevia. There we go. Not okay. Not talking about it anymore. Done. <laughs> I love you, but I'm done. <laughs> okay, because that's not what we're talking about today. This is an inspirational scope. It is not that kind of scope. You're welcome. All right. So, <laughs> all right. Just don't use it. <laughs> Do what I say. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Freaky. Just totally kidding. So. Uh, yeah, I absolutely. All right. So let's not get off on the stevia like road because it's a big topic. So I will talk about it again. Good. Good. I, I don't want you to be offended. So, right. I know that's right. Marcy, Marcy, find in the light. Thank you, Marcy. Okay. So my name is Leslie. I have a website. GoToKitchens.com. There is nothing for sale over at GoToKitchens. The only thing I want you to buy is I want you to buy into your own health. Part of your own health is your mental health. And so I like to send out inspirational messages to help you with that, to help you uh, battle, you know, if you're having trouble, right? If you're back on track, that's right. Uh, if you're having trouble with, um, with your mental being, your physical being will not line up either. And so you could be eating the best of the best of the best foods. Like you could be feeding your body the best of the best of the best foods. But if you are a stress cadet, you are still unhealthy. In fact, you may even be more unhealthy because stress is a killer. It will, it, it, it takes its toll on the body. So what I like to do is come on and do these inspirational scopes. One, to let you know that you're not the only one that deals with stress because a lot of us start to feel this emotion of I'm all alone in this. I'm the only one that has these issues. And I like for you to know that no, you're not. So <laughs> that's right. That's what gyms are for. So I like to come on here and, and, and feed your mind as well as as helping you feed your body. So every weekday, uh, or actually almost every day on Facebook, on my private page, I do a post. It's a hashtag is always light, never darkness. Hashtag always light. Thank you. That's awesome. Uh, hashtag always light, never darkness is my personal hashtag. And there, anytime you put that in on Facebook, you will see my inspirational posts. People are trying to nip it right now, but it has to be Leslie Nance and hashtag always light, never dark. <laughs> like dark chocolate. That's right. Thank you, Marcy. So um, a few days ago, I think it was actually Saturday, um, I taught, I, I put out this, um, that's right, healthy mind and body, absolutely, and soul. So thank you. Thank you, Sherry, for putting that out there. So um, I put out this post on Saturday, and I'm just going to read it to you, and then we'll then we'll talk about it. So here we go. Uh, do you live in a black and white world, an all or nothing state of mind? Each extreme has hard edges and it's inflexible. It's stressful. It's a stressful way to live. Compromise is a beautiful thing. People call compromise a gray area. You know, you hear that like, I'm, I, I'm in a gray area. They call it a gray area. I like to call it the colorful middle. In the colorful middle, I'm, feel to, I'm free to be creative in my thoughts, to bend for a situation, to practice compassion when needed. I can tune out the darkness and always find the light in the middle. 
just for today, soften your edges a bit and be more open-minded. Step out of your black and white lifestyle, be creative in your thoughts, and see the world and humanity from the colorful middle. So <laughs> this is a big, big topic for me. I talk about this a lot personally with people um, living in a black and white. You like that? I know. Um, I talk a lot about living in the black and white. People tend to live in um, in one extreme or the other, and they can't seem to find that middle ground. Like they can't ever live in that middle ground. And I have to tell you, the middle ground is actually a very happy place. People think that you're too vulnerable in the middle. People think that you're undecisive if you're in the middle, and it cannot be further from the truth. It just means that you have, um, <laughs> It just means that you have softer edges, that you are more flexible in your thinking, that you are not so rigid that if somebody comes up with an idea that you actually agree with, that you couldn't agree with it because you are so rigid in your thinking, right? So absolutely, yoga, things like that absolutely can help with those hard edges like that. So I just want to inspire you to think about living in the colorful middle just for a day. Just try it for a day, living in the middle. And when somebody says something that normally you wouldn't agree with, but it makes sense, have you ever had that happen? That's right. If you don't bend, you'll break. Um, if you if you ever had that happen where somebody says something and you're like, and it's really it's counterintuitive to or even maybe even counter logical to what you think, but it makes sense, and you're like, hmm, huh. That's kind of interesting. That's an interesting thought. And it puts you down a whole other path of thoughts. But you have you ever been so inflexible in your thought processes that you can't that you can't get out of that mindset that you're just like, no, but no, it, this is how it has to be. So <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I am. I'm not sure what the definition of that is. So yes, being open minded is so much easier than having these hard edges. And when I talk about the black and the white, I'm not talking about light and dark even. I'm talking about one extreme or the other, you know, yes or no, um, uh, you know, have to or don't have to, you know, living in those extremes is so stressful. It is absolutely so stressful. And if you can find a middle ground, if you can find compromise, you know, compromise is a beautiful thing in life. It is you know, a lot of people like to use it negatively, you know, oh, well, he compromised his values or he compromised his, you know, whatever or her whatever. And I really feel like that compromise makes you an easier person to live with. <laughs> I can tell you that I do not get everything that I want 100% of the time. Uh, I if it, and, it, and if I did, I wouldn't appreciate it. So the people that are given everything that they've ever wanted, they find it's, it's hard to appreciate it. So yes. So I am, I am here to tell you that the colorful middle is a beautiful place to live. Compromise is a good thing. It is a good thing. It makes you a much nicer person. It makes you much easier to live with. It makes you much easier to be around when you can have a little compromise. And so I just want to encourage you. I'm not going to turn this into a political thing, but I just want to encourage you as you're going through your thought processes about things that are coming up in our, especially in the United States here, um, it is leaving your ears open <laughs> for what you actually believe in. Don't just say, I am this or I am that. Don't stuff yourself in a box. Get yourself out of the box a little bit and use your brain. Use your noggin to agree with what you agree with and to disagree what you disagree with. Because ultimately being led around by, you know, something that you sort of agree with but don't agree with 100% of the time, but that's how you should be, is just ignorance. It's not, I'm not being rude there. Ignorance is not a rude term. It is absolutely a, you know, if I called you stupid, that would be one thing, but it's just absolute ignorance. So get out of your boxes, get out of your black and white mentality and live in the colorful middle. I promise you, I promise you, if you just try it for a day or two, you will find as your, <laughs> he is right there, as your edges start to soften a little bit, that you 
you're you're more open to other people's ideas and other people's beliefs and other people's notions even and so and it makes compromise so much easier so that is my message for you guys today I just do want to share my mantra with you which I always do I want to encourage you to have a mantra as well a mantra even if you're a Christian is not some woohee woohee thing it is absolutely a personal affirmation that you say to yourself on a regular basis to help get you into the right state of mind mine is please let me be light into dark spaces and never darkness into light spaces that is my personal mantra. You're welcome to adopt it if you want because it's a pretty darn good one. But that is my personal mantra. Please let me be light into dark spaces and never darkness into light spaces. And I feel that if I can achieve that, if I can achieve that on a regular basis, then sky's the limit right that I can absolutely do whatever it is that I want to do and so that is my personal my absolute personal mantra and I it has served me very very well throughout my 45 years I probably haven't had it 45 years but I've had it a long time um, and so it has served me very very well and it's a quick reminder because as soon as I want to be dark into light um, right absolutely um, as soon as I want to be dark into light so somebody gets underneath my skin or somebody aggravates me or something like that as soon as I want to do that the first thing I think of is Leslie your promise to yourself is always to be light into dark spaces so you have to make a choice and so I that's what I do so I want to encourage you to have something that is positive that you say to yourself on a daily basis so we can't enjoy light places without making them darker. I, I will tell you, I'm a firm believer that you can't have one without the other. If there was no darkness, you wouldn't understand light. If there was no calamity, you wouldn't understand the, the times of prosperity. And so you do have to have them both. I mean, when somebody tells you that you have cancer, that's a pretty dark space, right? But it was up to me. It was up to me to go, hmm. You know, I'm, I am I have two choices here. I can wallow around and be a cancer victim, or I can stand up and fight and be a and be a survivor. So yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So absolutely. I am uh, I I I have to disagree with you there Marcy. <laughs> I'd never see darkness as beautiful. So <laughs> there's always got to be some light in there, so <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, well, there actually the beauty in darkness for me is that there is always light, right? That there is always light that can penetrate it. So, and we're not being literal here. I'm not talking about like the night sky or something like that. I am just saying that there is always a there's always a turning point there. So, <laughs> yeah, I just don't I don't see any beauty in suffering or in demise or anything like that. I don't I don't see any beauty in that whatsoever. So, yeah. But I can find the light spaces absolutely. I can part the clouds very easily and see the light. So, yeah. So there you go. That is my uh that is my speech as Janie called it for today. <laughs> That is my speech. I, I have been a dark soul in my life. I spent the majority of my 20s and 30s in, in a dark place, and I don't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. There was nothing there that was that served me. <laughs> Freaky guy. You're very funny. You're very funny. Um, all right, you guys. I am out. I have so much work to do. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I know he's you're kind of funny as me Marcy so you guys have an amazing afternoon please 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 try to soften those edges a little bit try to find the compromise try to be what it is it's good to see you too Sherry try to be what it is that you maybe don't always agree with right that you're not a hundred percent in agreement with you know open your ears a little bit open your heart a little bit and see if you can find the light there so Right? I know. It would be awesome. It would be awesome if everybody could get on the same page. That's never going to happen, so. I know you did. <laughs> so, <laughs> my husband does that as well. He loves to be devil's advocate. It's like his favorite position to take, even if he's not serious about it. So, yeah, you too. Peace and blessings to you too, freaky guy. Thanks for being here. It's so funny, 666. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'd really like to know what your story is. Um, it's an attention getter at the very least. Does it ever get you blocked? I bet some people like, oh, you're a freaky guy. Bye. Because <laughs> maybe they mean like freaky, like bone chicka bow wow, freaky. I know, mine too. Actually, Marcy, so do I. I love to debate. It's like one of my favorite things to do. I was, I have, I, my whole like, you know, academic years um, was spent on a debate team and I love to debate. So, <laughs> you did, you blocked him. That's so funny. You can find him in search and you can unblock him. No, Marcy, your mind always does go there. You too, Alan. Thanks so much for being here. I love that you are here. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a few days, so thanks for being here. Have your cake and eat it too. What's that all about? Welcome, by the way. Whew, what a day it's been. What a day it's been. I got some good news today. I have to tell you guys, I can't tell you what it is, which is really stinky that I can't tell you, but I will tell you that I got some really good news today. And I, uh, right before my flip the switch broadcast, um, I got an email and I know I can't tell you, um, but <laughs> I know you do. Um, but I got an email and it was really, really good news. So I know very mysterious. I can't. I can't tell anybody. I can't even tell my mom and dad what it is yet. So, yeah. But I can tell you I got some good news. Then you can use your own imagination. <laughs> so, yes. Very, very good news today. Super, super excited. So, I don't know. I wish I knew when I could tell you. <laughs> is it what I'm thinking that I'm thinking? <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> so, yes. But, suffice to say that it was really, really good news. And it, it's funny because it kind of threw me off and I flipped the switch. Um, nope, can't. Um, it kind of threw me off in my, in my <laughs> Pictionary. <laughs> um, it kind of threw me off in my flip the switch broadcast. And I was like, it, it came in like literally like three minutes before I went on and my stupid notifications are on. And so it came on and I saw it and I was like, what? Okay. All right, and I had to like calm down, so. <laughs> you guys are so funny. <laughs> I love you to death. I wish I could just squeeze every single one of you. <laughs> I wish I could just squeeze you up, squeeze you, squeeze you, squeeze you. Give you a big old hug. One day, one day, we're gonna have a huge like Periscope reunion. We're gonna get all the GoTo Kitchens VIPs in, <laughs> in one. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh, Gwen, that's so funny that you said that. So yesterday, Robin and I did all of our errands on our bicycles and it was amazing. We had, it was so gorgeous out. And so I know, right? A go-to kitchens retreat. That would be awesome. Um, we did all of our, <laughs> no, no, I can tell you, uh, Kaylee, Kylie, that no, it does not. <laughs> I'm 45. That's never happening. Thank you so much. So, but we went, we did all of our errands on, uh, <laughs> <laughs> on our bikes yesterday and so um I'm not saying I can't say anything guys I swear to you all I can tell you is that I had good news you're gonna have to live with that you're gonna just be so yay she had good news and so <laughs> but we did our errands and we were riding and there was this guy sitting in this truck with this giant dog it was a giant dog with a big giant head and he was barking woof woof and I was like Edison just looked at me like, what are you doing, mommy? Big, huge bark. And I was like, what in the world? And then I looked over on the grass and there were puppies. There were little bitty puppies. They were like little bitty, little bitty fur balls and they were black and white. Oh my gosh. I was so in love. They were so cute. I know. I just loved them, loved them, loved them. <laughs> Those are some serious emojis. And so, no, I did not get a new puppy. But I, Robin wouldn't even go see them because he's like, if I go see them, we're going to come home with a puppy because you're going to be like, oh, baby, but look at the puppies. <laughs> Madison's like, puppies, where's puppies? And I was like, no, no, I swear, just come look at them with me. And he's like, no, <laughs> he wouldn't even go over there. So I'm, I'm picking them up and I'm showing them like, look at this one, how cute he is. Oh my God. They were so cute. They were old English sheepdogs and they were like the softest, most beautifulest little things ever except Edison is cuter but still they were so sweet oh my god they were so sweet 
So cute. I love puppy breath. Amazing. That is not my secret. I don't have a secret. I just can't tell you what's going on right now. Maybe soon. Maybe soon. <laughs> yeah, you definitely do not need one. They are so sweet. I should have scoped it, but we were kind of in a hurry. And anyway, yeah, and I didn't want to. The dog was so loud. I was like, you're never going to sell these puppies with that big barking dog right there. <laughs> oh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay, so I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to go. And hopefully, hopefully sometime next week, I'm going to have an announcement for you guys. Not on my secret. The secret's going to be two or three weeks, I bet. But yeah, see you guys. But um, I'm going to have a big announcement about Go To Kitchens just in general. So go buy beans. That's right. Go buy your beans. There are two replays sitting out there, right? There are two replays sitting out there. There's one for Sprouts here at Go To Kitchens. And um, there is a... Um, there is on Parachute TV, on Flip the Switch, there's chocolate to learn how to make chocolate over there. So thank you, Marcy. All right, you guys, love you so much. I really am leaving. Parachute TV one. That's right. <laughs> a cookbook. No, it's not a cookbook. No, I wish it was a cookbook, but it's not. We'll get there one day. It's going to be a teaching cookbook when it's a cookbook, but no. See you guys. Love you so much. Have an amazing day, an amazing evening. I will be back at noon tomorrow. We are sprouting for reels for reels, real deals tomorrow at noon mountain time. We are doing sprouting basics with beans. We're going to sprout some beans tomorrow. So go soak your beans. One cup of beans, three cups of water, purified water with a piece of saran wrap over them. Start them today. So tomorrow you can follow through on the next step of that with me. Maybe you can do it live even. So all right. Love you guys. See you later. Bye.